I am Rashad Ahmadov from SBE Baku High Road School Student Chapter Team. And thank you all for joining us today. Uh, today we are honored by Nazlu Insal, who, who, who is uh, currently working as the Talent Acquisition Manager in Sokar, Turkey. Prior, and uh, she has experience over than uh, 15 years. And prior to Sokar, Turkey, she worked in uh, many international companies like DuPont, ABB, HP, and Schneider Electric. And if you, during the session, if you have any questions, you may put that question in the chat section or you may um, unmute yourself and chime in the discussion and ask your question. Thank you all for your attention. I'll be your moderator during the session. Now, stage is Nazlı Hanım. So, Nazlı Hanım, please. Thank you, Raisal. Thank you, everyone, for attending. It's a pleasure for me to be here today with all of you. As Raisal mentioned, I'm working for uh, Sokar Turkey for the last one and a half year as Talent Acquisition Manager uh, with my team of four. And we are uh, serving to all Sokar Group companies in Turkey for all kinds of uh, recruitment activities, starting from interns to uh, director or top manager level. So let me uh, share my screen. Okay, I hope that you can see it. Today I want to give you some tips about how to prepare a CV and some uh, interview techniques. I hope that you will enjoy it and if you have any questions as Rashad mentioned, please ask whenever you want or put it in the chat button. Okay, let's start with a brief introduction of a CV. What is a CV? As we all know, it is a detailed doc document highlighting your professional and uh, academic history. It includes information like your work experience, achievements, scholarships, and your uh, personal information. Why you need a CV? We need a CV, a resume, uh, because it is an important tool for your job search, because it is your first chance to get attention of the employers. Employers make hiring decisions uh, or, let's say, decisions to in include you in the interview process or not just by uh, uh, looking to your CV. So it is very important to uh, create a good first imp impression with your CV. Uh, CVs uh, most of the time uh, attached with a cover letter. Uh, some companies uh, require to submit a cover letter as well as a resume, some not, but uh, as a fresh graduates, I will recommend you to put a cover letter, a brief one together with your resume while applying to uh, companies. Uh, there are two types of cover letters. First one is the application letter, which is written for a specific job opening. The other one is prospecting letter, which is uh, when you send your uh, resume uh, to a company without a specific job opening, but just for that company. Uh, in, in your cover letters, please try to be uh, brief and to the point. Uh, if you are applying for a specific job opening, please put the uh, title of the job uh, which, which you are uh, applying. Uh, give some information about how you learned the job. Is it through a referral or a job advertisement uh, where you heard about the opening? Uh, Inform the employer why you think you are qualified for the job and try to be specific here. Uh, try to mention uh, your skills, which you think the, it is a good fit for the job and what you will offer to the employer, uh, uh, what, why they should hire you for that specific uh, opening. And of course, uh, with, with, with a thank you, thank you closing at the end. It should be brief, like one or two paragraphs, please don't make it too long okay okay there are um, two types of cvs first one is chronological cv the other one is functional cv chronological cv uh, is the mostly used one it focuses on presenting uh, your experience on employer by employer basis uh, in reverse chronological order 
Uh, it is useful for applying in same industry or similar jobs. It is the favorite format of uh, recruiters because it is very easy to read. And uh, I recommend this version, this chronological version with uh, like you uh, as fresh graduates or uh, p um, candidates with few work experiences. Uh, if you don't have many achievements, taking a job application uh, can detail your main uh, responsibilities. So I recommend you to use chronological format. The functional format uh, places uh, uh, emphasis on your skills and uh, experiences rather than the chronology of your employment history. Uh, when we should use it, for example, if you have many gaps in your um, uh, in your career, of you want to change a role, for example, you are working uh, in the sales career for a couple of years, but you just want to uh, change your career to human resources or finance, I don't know. Uh, it will be uh, advantageous uh, to, to use functional CV because it will focus on your achievements rather than your career progression. And um, the second uh, advantage if, is if, if you are a mature applicant, uh, it will spotlight. Uh, it will take the spotlight from your age than to your uh, achievements. Uh, disadvantages of a functional CV is if you don't have much experiences, you may struggle to highlight those experiences in the beginning. And uh, employers usually don't like this format uh, because it is not that much easy to read, and uh, Recruiters uh, mainly want to see clearly what you do in your previous uh, job experience. So, as I mentioned, it will be better to use the chronological format for you. And this is the most common one that most uh, applicants use in their uh, CVs. Uh, I want to give some information regarding the order sections of the CVs. The first one is uh, um, they're, they're very similar, but as a fresh graduate, I uh, recommend you to, to use the second one. So, which will start with your uh, contact information, uh, then a brief personal statement, your career objective, then put your education first, and then your work experiences, including your internships, your voluntary experiences, work experiences, then your skills, and then extra sections. As um, new or fresh graduates, as I said, uh, it will be better for you to put your education first than your work experience. Uh, in, for senior candidates, it is the vice versa. First contact information, then personal statement, then work experience, and education follows the work experience. Okay. So, uh, what your CV should include? Of course, you should start with contact information. I know that it sounds very basic, but you cannot imagine how many CVs I'm receiving without phone number or the email address. So, I know it's the basic information, but uh, please don't forget to put it. It should include your contact information, your full name, phone number, and email address. Uh, academic history, you should list uh, your schoolings, uh, starting from reverse chronological order, of course, and uh, your university, if you have a master's degree, then your high school, please don't include uh, your primary school or middle school, okay, just high school is uh, enough. Please don't uh, forget to include the title of your degree, if you have a bachelor's, uh, bachelor's of arts, bachelor's of science, your graduation years, your school name, your um, department name, all those information should be there. Uh, your professional experiences, uh, the name of the organization that you worked, your job title there, your um, employment dates, uh, your summary of your role and achievements, not very detailed, but uh, some important points of your um, uh, role there and your achievements. Then qualifications and skills. It is the combination of your both soft and hard skills, actually, that you develop throughout your career. Uh, if you have any uh, awards, honors, scholarships, please put them at the name, name of the award or the scholarship, uh, the name of the organization that gave you uh, that scholarship or award, uh, the details of it, 
all those should be in your CV. And then your licenses, your certifications. Voluntary work is also important because, as you know, all know, as fresh graduates, we are receiving many similar CVs coming from the similar educational backgrounds, similar internships. So those extracurricular activities, your voluntary uh, work uh, creates much uh, difference. Hobbies and interests, it is optional. I mean, I cannot say that you have to put it, but as fresh graduates, I mean, employers or recruiters, we want to get some insight about your, your hobbies, your interests, because it gives us some insights about what kind of person you are. So it is important for us uh, to see those, uh, those, those details as well. But as I said, it is optional. I mean, I cannot say it is a must. But as a recruiter, I mean, I prefer to see them uh, in um, fresh graduate uh, CVs as well. So this, uh, let's move on. What you should not include in your resumes. Uh, no need to put your physical address because, you know, some uh, there are some uh, rules, GDPR rules that we, uh, as companies, we all should uh, obey. So we don't need your physical address. Just the city is okay. No need to put your date of birth because, uh, you know, in, um, in in some cultures we are still putting it, but no need your uh, birth date. No need of your photo, your uh, personal details, your mental status, like uh, nationality, gender, or references. If if we need references, we will contact with you. Okay, no need to put any references. Uh, if you are currently working, don't put your work email address or any other uh, business contact information regarding your current employer. Don't put any irrelevant social media URLs, okay? Uh, hobbies, interests are okay, but any irrelevant social media URLs, we don't want them, uh, we don't want to see them in your CVs. So the basic information is enough. Uh, there are some major CV mistakes that I want to emphasize here. Uh, it, it should be uh, to the point and short, okay? Um, for example, I have 16 years of work experience and my CV is one and a half page. So as fresh graduates, it should be one page, okay? Please don't put it longer than two. I said here longer than two pages, but believe me, one page is important because we are receiving thousands of applications, so uh, people do not read it. Please uh, try to be to the point. Don't use inappropriate email addresses like, I don't know, like dark weather, those kind of very irrelevant email addresses we are seeing in the CVs. It, they do not appear uh, professional. It should include your name and surname or those kind of uh, things, but nothing irrelevant. Please don't uh, check if the uh, contact information is co correct. As I said, I'm receiving many CVs without contact information or wrong contact information. It is very important that you should check it and put only your contact information. From the fresh graduates we are receiving, for example, their parents' phone number. We don't want to contact with them. We want to contact with you. So put to correct your uh, uh, contact information. Uh, if you are applying for a specific role, you 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 can change, uh, modify, let me say, modify your CV uh, to that specific role. So it is okay to make some uh, modifications specific to the role that you are applying. Please check the format. I mean, formatting is really important. Try not to make any mm, grammar mistakes or uh, some... Uh, 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 Fancy, uh, fancy formats. It should seem, uh, it should be easy to read and uh, clear uh, and a professional format. Uh, don't put too much in unnecessary information. For example, as I said, your primary school, your achievements in your primary school, uh, they are irrelevant. Try not to put, exaggerate the truth. Don't uh, put any misleading information. Um, for example, any awards that you, you haven't gained, uh, try to be specific and putting only the uh, information uh, that is true. So let's move to the interview. Uh, until now, I tried to give you some information regarding uh, CV tips, uh, but I believe that you are all familiar. And now, from now on, I want to give you some information regarding the types of interviews uh, and uh, tips while preparing to an interview. 
So uh, as uh, employers, as a talent acquisition team, our aim is to create a harmony between qualifications of the candidate and the qualifications required by the job uh, and to find the best candidates for the role and the company. It is not only finding the best candidate, but best candidate for that specific role and the company. Company culture is also very important. So our role is to uh, find the harmony between these three. So uh, let's focus on uh, the steps, how you prepare for an interview. Uh, as you all know, it starts with the call that you are receiving from the recruiters. It could be either for uh, after your application or it could be a headhunt. So you, you can uh, get the call uh, in an unexpected uh, time or situation. So please try to get all the details and uh, you should ask uh, the details, the time and the location, um, of the interview, whom you will be meeting with. This is important. Uh, most of the candidates uh, come uh, to our office. They, they said in the reception that they are uh, in our office in order to attend to an interview, but they don't know with whom they will be interviewing with. So it is important you get all those details. Uh, it will be beneficial for you to learn the details of the interview. Okay, will it be a one-to-one -one interview? Will it be an interview with HR or the hiring manager? Uh, and if it is a headhunt call that you are getting, you can uh, you can ask if you can get uh, the copy of the job description because because it will help you to to prepare for the interview. Uh, while getting second step is getting ready for the interview, please uh, research the company uh, and the role. Uh, it is really important um, that 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 you have information about the company and the role requirements before the interview. Uh, try to uh, be prepared for the common questions that you can get. I will give some uh, common questions that you will probably uh, ask by the recruiters in any kind of interviews. In order to uh, reduce your stat, if it is a physical um, interview, I know that it is uh, not possible for the last one year because of this pandemic situation, but uh, even it will be a face-to-face -face interview, check the location before the interview in order not to be late. Take the parking uh, spot, the transportation alternatives. If it is an online interview, take, check your technical um, uh, abilities before the interview. Um, if, as I, as I said, it is a physical interview, it, it will be beneficial for you to uh, decide what will you wear uh, during the interview. It will be good to prepare them one night before. Uh, in the interview day, as, as you can all know, it, it is very important to be there on time. Not too early and never late. Uh, not too early is also important because sometimes we are having back-to-back -back interviews and if you come there uh, like more than 10 minutes early, like half an hour early, uh, sometimes um, recruiters or the hiring managers have difficulties to uh, arrange you an, an extra meeting room. Uh, to host you, so try uh, to be on time. Uh, try to uh, look formal, I mean, uh, not no too many fragrances, not smoking, uh, no, no cigarettes, no gums. It is okay to be stressful but nervous uh, because uh, we, we all know that we all know training that interview is a stressful thing for, for everyone, not for fresh graduates also, only but also everyone. Uh, during the interview, try to be try to use positive statements that I can, uh, I will, I can do. Be, uh, pay attention to your body language. Uh, try to be um, uh, motivated. Try to show your motivation and be, with high energy uh, to the employer. Use your uh, eye contacts. Uh, it is. Um, uh, try to be prepared uh, for asking questions and giving some specific examples uh, about uh, the, the the questions that you will receive from the interviewer. Um, after the interview, it is uh, good to send a thank you email after the interview, and if you don't hear from the company, it is okay uh, to, to to send a follow up email or a follow up call uh, after two weeks. So these are the important steps for preparing an interview. Uh, I wanted to give some more details about uh, the uh, during the interview, what you should do during the interview. Um, 
per, the most important one is, as I said, researching about the company and the role. The major mistake of fresh graduates is that they don't make much research about the company or the role. It's not all, uh, enough to have information about only the company, but please uh, have uh, make some research about the role as well. Um, the, the, here, the main uh, main rule is to search about the company and the role and create your own questions. It will not only show you as an eager candidate, but also someone who actually spent time in getting to know about uh, his or her future employer. Uh, avoid to, to give some fake or generic answers because interviewers are more experienced than you and they know what kind of an employer they want to see in their team. Uh, interview is the time to, to talk about your strengths and how you are the right fit for the role, but uh, giving some um, uh, correct information. So avoid uh, giving generic information and try to be unique and giving specific information. Competency-based interview questions, I will focus them uh, in, in, in the coming slides, but uh, here just I want to say it's competency-based questions that is, uh, it is the most common interview technique that we are all using. Here, the employers will uh, want to hear some specific examples of your, uh, of your past uh, experiences, so uh, be prepared to give some specific examples. Uh, Motivation is really important and you should show your motivation, why you are motivated for the company, for the role, and why you are the best fit for that role. Um, don't oversell yourself. Uh, art of successful interview is knowing where to strike the balance. Uh, you, should, uh, you should be self-confident, but not arrogant. You should be vocal, but not annoying. You should be smart, but not much egoistic. Sell your potential talent, but please don't overdo it. As a fresh graduate, your advantage is uh, your education and your people skills, so try to focus that, okay? I know that as a fresh graduate, interview is always a difficult experience, but, uh, but the more you are prepared, focused, and determined for the role, the better your chances is uh, securing the job. Uh, at the end of the day, it depends on how, bad you, how badly you want that job, the company, and why you believe you are best fit for that role. So, uh, uh, so be prepared, write down your skills, strengths and weaknesses before the interview, make some uh, practices, uh, think about your stories, your experiences and situations um, where you were able to utilize the best of your skills and change the situation for the better. This is uh, especially important for competency-based questions. Uh, I can say that the more you know yourself better, the better you will perform in the interviews. Let's focus on some interview types. As I said, the most common one is competency-based interviews. I will focus it uh, later uh, in the coming slides. The other one is stress interviews. Stress interview questions are designed to put uh, interviewee into an uncomfortable situation and to see how you perform under stress. Uh, you may receive questions like um, why you are fired from your, your previous company? Why do you think that, how do you think the interview is going? What do you think about your performance up until now? Why did you apply for this job when you don't have enough experience? Uh, what do you think, I'm a good interviewer or not? So these are all some questions that uh, aim is to put you under stress. What you should do is you should stay calm, you should stay positive, and you should not take the questions personal and keep your motivation and positive attitude and uh, answer those questions. Technical interview, it, it is um, clear that uh, it is, uh, the interview is not with the HR, uh, but it is for a technical role with, with a technical ex expertise of that role. So if you are invited to a technical interview, you should be prepared with your technical skills, maybe the lessons you got in the university. So you should be prepared to give some uh, technical answers to the question. Um, panel interviews and group interviews, they are uh, similar, but uh, one basic um, difference. In panel interviews, there will be one candidate and multiple interviewers. Like uh, it will be one HR, hiring manager, or from the co-worker from the same um, uh, department. In group interviews, uh, there is one interviewer, mainly the hiring manager or the HR, but multiple candidates. For both of them, the tips is you should be yourself. You should be a good listener. Uh, try to be a leader 
uh, in the uh, group interviews. You should be prepared, be confident, and uh, you should follow up the questions in, in both of them. In panel interviews, you, you should follow up the questions coming from the interviewers, uh, as that they will, there will be many interviewers. In group interviews, there will be many candidates, so you should uh, follow their answers as well in order to, uh, answer, to give your specific answers. Role play, uh, it is also a common um, uh, interview type. Uh, in, in this role play, you will receive a scenario. It could be in both ways. Either you will receive the scenario in the interview and uh, we will give you some like half an hour to, to, to be prepared, or we can send it a couple of hours ago or one day before the interview and we will ask you to prepare a, a presentation. For example, we did it uh, in two months ago when we were hiring fresh uh, chemical engineers for our production units in the refinery. We sent the case uh, the case uh, one day before, 24 hours before, and asked the fresh graduates to be prepared, and they prepared us um, a pr presentation, and both HR and the uh, uh, engineers from our refinery uh, asked some questions during those role plays. So let's focus on the competency-based interviews. As I said, this is the most common interview technique that uh, all companies are using. Uh, it is uh, competency-based interview or behavioral interview. We are using both titles. Uh, we love this technique because it is systematically designed a structured interview. If the aim of the questions is to get examples from your past behaviors. Um, competence, idea of competency-based interview is that uh, the potential employee's past performance is the best predictor of their future performances. That's why we will ask you to give some specific examples of your previous experiences. Uh, it is good for uh, in, uh, recruiters as well because interview process goes in the same direction for each candidate. Uh, so it will allow us to be objective, as objective as possible to all candidates because we will ask the same questions to all candidates. So there will be an objective evaluation at the end. So what is competency-based interview? Uh, we call it a STAR technique, uh, four uh, main steps. First one is the situation. The uh, recruiter will ask uh, you to introduce the situation first and set the context. Then comes with task. Uh, you should describe the task you had to complete, including the expectations and the challenges of the role. Then your action. You should explain in detail what you did and how you did it, and then the result. It ends with the results of your efforts, including your accomplishments, rewards, and the impact at the end. Um, competencies are very important and each company has their own unique competencies. In SOCAR of also we have our competencies in, and we want to see those competencies in each and every candidate that uh, we are interviewing. Competencies are important because it gives us directions and enable uh, employers to set success criteria for the job. They are measurable, so they will allow us to make um, objective uh, evaluations for each candidate. They ensure interviewers focus on the most important points of the job. Uh, we will be sure that the same criteria are used for all candidates. It, it allows us to be consistent and fair standards for each and every candidate. And they prevent interviewers, the recruiters, from making wrong decisions uh, with missing data. So competencies are important and we are asking competency-based questions in each and every interview, whether it's a fresh graduate interview or a senior role. Um, as I said, the aim of the competency-based interview is to observe whether candidate demonstrates relevant competencies in a particular situation. Uh, the important point is how you behaved in a situation in the past. So we, we, will, uh, we want to uh, listen uh, specific examples from your past experiences. Here, while giving your answers, it is important to express the situation with I expression because we want to hear what you did, not your team, your colleagues, but what you did uh, as yourself specifically. Uh, we will ask questions about, what, as I said, what is the situation, who was involved, what was the expectation from your side. You should give all those uh, details in a clear uh, context with net outcomes. Uh, and if we cannot get all details, we will um, ask uh, 
following questions, follow-up questions, like what did you do, what did you say, what was your role in that specific situation? Um, uh, so those kind of questions, you should, should expect receiving those kind of questions. Um, so here you, you may see some uh, star responses. For example, let's focus on the second one. Uh, you may read it here. You can see all those uh, all four points. For, for example, the situation, the fire, uh, fire and the patient's collapse in the emergency room. The task, uh, the candidate's watch was over, but he or she stayed there until the stop, support staff arrived. What did he do? The first intervention to the patients and waited there until the patients are treated. Uh, what was the result? Uh, everything was fine and the patients were grateful and the support staff were uh, grateful and the emergency room returned to the normal. So here, all four uh, elements of the um, star uh, is uh, presented. So here you may see some basic uh, questions uh, that you may get during the interviews. As you can see, it, I will not go over all of them in details, but all starts with tell me about the time, give me a specific example. So uh, describe uh, a time, describe an example. So all those questions uh, as recruiters, we will want to hear specific examples of what you did in a uh, similar situation in the past. So you should be uh, ready to give some specific examples. For example, how you behave under stress, uh, how you prioritize in an urgent situation. Um, uh, a, a, a task you tried to accomplish but failed, what did you learn? Those kind of important examples, you should have some uh, ready uh, examples on your mind. Um, these are the basic interview questions that you will probably uh, ask by uh, interviewers uh, in, in each of your interviews. Tell me about yourself, what is your strengths, what is your weaknesses, why you want this job, what is your ideal company? Uh, why you applied for this role, for this company, uh, what is your career aspirations, why we should select you, why we should hire you. Uh, those, these are the standard questions that uh, you will receive from, uh, from, from hiring managers or the HRT. Um, so this is uh, why we are coming to the end. Uh, here are some uh, most common interview mistakes. Uh, dressing inappropriately. Uh, the appropriate dress code differs from company to company, so it is important to make a research for, about the company uh, before going. If it is a Google, yes, uh, it will be a different dress code, but if you are applying for a public institute, of course, the dress code will be uh, different. So you, you should understand the code of the company, the culture of the company, and dress appropriately. As I said, arriving late is not acceptable, but too early is also uh, not very preferable. Please don't use your phone. Uh, be prepared about the company. For example, when I was um, working for Schneider Electric, we were having Schneider Electric is a French-based company, okay, and there was a fresh graduate, uh, very arrogant, and he insisted on saying that no, no, I know Schneider is a German company. I was saying that no, it is a French-originated company. No, no, I know that it's the German company. I mean, he, he cannot know it better than me, okay? So you should be prepared about the company. Uh, please be aware of what you put in the resume. Uh, there are some candidates, for example, uh, having a copy of their resume in front of them, which is fine, but they are always checking um, the employment dates or the uh, awards from, from the CV. You should know them by your heart, okay? You should not read them from your resume. You, sh you should know those dates, accomplishments uh, from, uh, by heart. Uh, you should be energetic because you want that role, okay? You, in order to get that role, you, you should demonstrate high energy. You should pay attention to the questions and to the point, you should give to the point answers. We don't want to hear um, irrelevant answers. You should answer what the uh, interviewer is asking. You should have some questions at the end. Okay, please be prepared to ask some questions because in the closing part, uh, interviewers will ask you, do you have any questions? You should have some relevant questions about the role. Uh, you should uh, not talk too much, but the vice versa is also uh, bad. 
you should give some details to the questions. I mean, it is not acceptable to answer just with yes or no or very brief sentences. You should give some details about to the, to the uh, questions. Please don't criticize your previous employers or your colleagues or your uh, professors. Uh, they can be very bad, but criticizing your previous employers or colleagues will not create a good impression about yourself. OK, uh, you could be very, very right, but we don't want to hear them. And the uh, last part is following up to aggressively. It is good to follow up after the interview, as I said, after two weeks, after three weeks, but do not make it too aggressively, like calling each and every day, uh, sending emails each and every day, trying to reach out some senior people from the company. Uh, it, it, it should be in an acceptable limit. Uh, following up too aggressively will also create a negative image uh, in front of the HRT. Um, this is all that I want to express to you. Thanks a lot for uh, listening. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. Let me stop sharing also and try to see if there are any questions in the chat box as well. Thank you, Nazl Khan. Thank you very much. That presentation was so insightful. <laughs> and thanks a lot for your time and presentation. And we have lots of questions here. And if someone wants to ask that uh, question, they can unmute your, um, themselves and can ask uh, questions directly. Otherwise, uh, would you like me, Nazl Khan, read the questions from chat box? Yes, sure. I'm also trying to ch check them as well. Okay, then I, I will start with the first one. Uh, if I don't have professional experience, should I include internships instead? Yes, yes, yes. Internships are very important. You should put them in your CV because, uh, as I said, I mean, as a fresh graduate, there will be many CVs that we are receiving in the same, with similar backgrounds, let me say. So internship is one of the most critical part that uh, we will distinguish uh, you from many other applications because, I mean, we are receiving for, especially for fresh graduate roles, if the company is a well-known one, we are receiving uh, around thousands of uh, applications. Okay, so you, you should include your internship experiences there. Thank you, Nasl Hanum. And I hope, uh, Rasul, that answer was uh, satisfactory. And uh, Afak Hashimova asked that, is putting LinkedIn profile URL to CV irrelevant? No, LinkedIn is fine. Link because it is, it is a professional network. But uh, we don't want to see Facebook or Instagram, okay? But LinkedIn is fine. And Tarlan asks that, hello, uh, these are true for only Sokar or for also others? Uh, these are generic gen generic tips, okay? It is not only for Sokar, for all companies, because... Hello, Hello. Uh, let me clarify my question. Uh, this is about uh, putting a uh, picture or putting references to us, our Swiss, and, uh, and you said that uh, it's, uh, it's not okay putting our uh, photo or putting our, our references to our Swiss. But I saw in different countries, uh, different uh, companies, uh, they need our pictures, they need our references, and some other. Uh, as that it's, is it okay for only soccer or it's relevant for uh, other uh, companies? Uh, it is a gen generic rule that you shouldn't include your uh, CV, but it is the main except th th this rule is mainly uh, created from U US, okay, uh, uh, from from uh, United States, but it is uh, acceptable in um, Europe as well. Uh, I know that some companies uh, want to see the photos, but if they do not mention, uh, I recommend you not to put uh, your references and and your photo in the CV. References because it is also from the GDPR issue. I, I'm not sure if you, if you know all those details, but due to GDPR, I mean you sh you cannot give contact details of uh, someone to another company. Okay, uh, so put it like uh, references are available upon request. Don't put directly in the first application. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Great, someone chimed in and asked questions. And uh, next question, 
is it is it a mistake to have references in CV? And I think you have answered it. Yes. Uh, if you don't, if you would like to clarify it more and give some more details about your questions, you may unmute yourself. And then uh, next question from Fidan Jabrailova. Companies tend to teach technical stuff to their new employees. That's why it's said that soft skills are way important than technical skills. What can you say about it? What uh, we, we should work on our soft skills or technical one? Which one is more important? Um, uh, good question. Thank you. Well, it depends from the role you are applying. For example, I mean, if um, some companies yes has structured uh, fresh graduate programs that you are getting uh, technical um, uh, technical classes or technical lessons after uh, employed by the companies. Uh, what can I say is you are all coming from some reputable universities, so you are getting technical knowledge in the university. Uh, but soft skills, yes, you should develop them by yourself. It could be, as I said, um, employ some voluntary works, uh, working in some NGOs, um, getting some extracurricular activities. For, for example, let's say that you are a, an engineering student, but you, you may get some extra classes from some um, uh, uh, social degrees and de develop yourself. So uh, I would recommend to develop your soft skills, uh, to, to pay attention to develop your soft skills because you are getting those uh, technical information in, in the university. There are some questions about the internship opportunities at Soccer, right? Yes, I haven't seen them, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I saw it. Uh, let me give some information. Yeah, yeah, some some gen generic information about the internship at Sokar Turkey. Okay, uh, probably you all know that each and every year we are getting um, uh, interns for, from uh, from uh, Baku High School Academy. Uh, until uh, uh, last year, we couldn't do it because of this pandemic situation. Uh, this year, uh, I, we are still in discussion with our top management team. If we will have, but it is not specific only to the students from Baku. Okay, we, we couldn't hire any interns from Turkey as well, from Turkish students as well. The internship program canceled because of this pandemic situation, as in most companies. Uh, this year, it is still under discussion with the top management. Uh, our aim is to clarify it until uh, mid of March, so in maximum in one month. If we will get uh, applications, we will uh, uh, announce it from our social media channels, from our career side linkedin page instagram page okay so you you can follow uh, our um, social media accounts this clarified many questions <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the next one uh, i'll try to uh, read them quickly at the end uh, it is better uh, it's question from a fact at the end it's better to write thank you email to hr or hiring manager Will we be provided with his or her contact information to send the email or is it OK to ask his or her email after finishing the interview? You can ask. Uh, I believe that you will uh, have the contact details of the HR because uh, it, HR will be in touch with you in order to invite you and send the invitation link or the physical uh, address. Uh, it, it is OK to ask the uh, contact information of the hiring manager and you can send the email directly and you can ask also to HR. I mean, I'm also receiving some uh, questions from uh, the candidates about the contact information of the hiring managers. Uh, it is OK for me to share the email address, maybe not the personal uh, phone, but email address is perfectly fine to share. Great, thank you. And we, I think we have left with four or five questions. And the next question is from Talia. Uh, hi, Nazlı Hanım. I have three questions. First, we have gaps in our series. Let's say we don't have even internship experiences because of pandemic. Uh, what would you advise to include? The, uh, would you like me to continue to read all questions or would you like to answer one by one? Uh, let, let's do it one by one. Uh, I know that it it is a bit... Mm, 
unlucky for you, I mean, this pandemic situation, and I know that most of the companies canceled their uh, internship opportunities, but try to find some. I mean, there are some uh, companies who are making online internship programs. Now, nowadays, we are also working on that. If you could not welcome uh, interns face to face, we are working on online internship program. So try to find some kind of uh, online internship program. But if you cannot find anything, as I said, uh, try to make some voluntary activities during those summer periods in order to show something in your resume. It could be, I don't know, I mean, Erasmus studies, as I said, voluntary activities, even giving um, some lessons to primary school uh, students or uh, being as a barista, this is also fair, for example, in, when I was in HP, we were mainly hiring um, uh, fresh graduates to sales roles because in Turkey, HP is a sales office. And um, for example, people, uh, the students with having experiences in retail stores or some coffee shops like Starbucks, they uh, did, uh, they they uh, they perform very well in those role plays because they are also sales experiences. Okay, so don't underestimate any job experience. Try to get some. Thank you. And the next question: What about background color in CV? Some of them pro prepare them in Word format or more colorful. Uh, I don't prefer the. Colorful ones, it should be proper, like white background, but uh, don't send it as a word format. Okay, you can prepare it in the word format, but convert it to PDF and send it like that to us. But don't use like oranges, pinks, uh, if you are not applying to an advertisement agency. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then next one is uh, about the job description in CV we had done before. How many sentences are enough to express them? Four to five bullets maximum, or three, three, three to five bullets, let me say. Oh, okay. Uh, to be honest, I would like to add one more thing about my CV, one more point. Uh, for my prayer uh, experiences, I have included uh, some project names, what we have done and what we have achieved in three bullet points. Is it fine or is it okay to include them? It depends on in what detail you put it. Yes, you should put it, but, but let's think about it like that. For example, are, are you a chemical engineer, Rashad? As you may yes. answer. Okay. Yes. Uh, let's say that you, you completed your internship in Petkim and you did a very detailed project. Okay. And you put it in a half page. I mean, I'm not an engineer, and most of the HR uh, people who are working in HR are not engineers. So I will not understand that much details. Okay. So just it is again the same thing I mean, in, in two or three sentences explain it of course put the project name and what was it about but not too much details no one will read it in hrt <laughs> yes thank you <laughs> and the next question from itan sometimes putting photo in cv is required generally is it okay to include photo and i think you have answered this question when you were answering the question of tarlan if you are putting the uh, photo uh, Please again pay attention. It should be a proper photo. Okay, it's it should be a professional one. For example, people are you, uh, taking it uh, from from for example from a summer vacation, and as you are cutting it from here, <laughs> I mean, sometimes in the photos in the um, CVs are not looking very proper. Uh, it it should be with a white shirt or something proper, and if you are putting it, but we don't prefer to see. Because, you know, I mean, it, uh, the, the main idea under it is the discrimination as it is created from the US it, in order to not to make any discrimination. Companies do not want to see this, uh, photos. Thank you, Nazlı Hanım. Uh, and uh, Atalia has some uh, big question, but before that, I think we can uh, answer uh, some <laughs> A little one, small ones. So, uh, Talia, we will be back. We will be back to that question. And uh, Rasul has uh, asked that: What are we expected to answer for? Tell me about yourself. Um, uh, what I want to hear uh, in in this question is: Start from your um, uh, academic background. 
okay your high school uh, your uh, university degree what did you uh, achieved in uh, in the university for example if you uh, prepared a graduation project uh, tell us about that one your internships uh, and your, then your hobbies your interests and um, your uh, career goal as a fresh graduate Thank you, Nazlı Hanım. And next question from Junaid. Uh, good afternoon, Nazlı Hanım. I'd be happy if you answer my question. In some scholarship programs, there is a requirement, for example, 2,000 hours of work experience. If I am a fresh graduate, do, do volunteering experience or working at some organizations count as work experience? Or must I have uh, experience directly related to my major? I believe it depends from what kind of scholarship programs you are applying. For example, in Turkey, I can say some uh, scholarships for MBA programs, they require uh, work experience, professional work experiences. But some others, they can't also um, uh, voluntary work as well. So it depends, I believe, you are, uh, depends on the organization that, that the, the scholarship will be provided. Thank you, Nazlı Hanım. And uh, Tofik has asked a question about Sokar Turkey internship, and you have answered it. So, which type of tech question from Arzu? Which type of technical questions can be in interview? How do we can prepare this question well? Uh, it, it depends on the role that you are applying. For example, as I said, I mean, we hired some um, chemical engineering fresh graduates for process engineering roles. It was for our refiners, star refiner. So those questions are prepared by our engineers and uh, they were very specific uh, about the process in the refinery. So uh, it, as I said, I mean, it is important to know about the role that you are applying. So be prepared about uh, uh, those kind of technical questions. As, as I said, as it's the process engineering role in the refinery, those questions was related to your um, uh, university lessons, uh, that, that you got those lessons in the universities and they related to process, uh, some chemical processes. So I, told, I don't know deep details of it, but uh, uh, process details of some chemical engineering lessons. Okay, thank you. And question from Zümrüt. Hello, thanks for the session. What would you advise about mentioning the courses, for instance, SPE, SEG, etc. we have attended, completed, if we don't have any internship or job experience? Uh, it would be good uh, to include, but for example, you put here SEG. I'm not very familiar with what abbreviation is it. If you are putting them, put it in a uh, long way, okay, not in abbreviations. Thank you. And question from Tarlan. What about uh, Russian language? I mean, how does this language impress to HRs? Because this is main issue in local companies. Um, this is something that I'm not very sure to say the truth because uh, in Sokar, I'm responsible only for the uh, Sokar Turkey, the recruitment activities in Sokar Turkey. So Russian language is not a prerequisite or something, nothing that we are looking for. Our company uh, language is English. So uh, what we are looking is only English. For Sokar, uh, Azerbaijan, uh, as far as I know, because one of our HR directors moved to um, Sokar Azerbaijan as well, uh, they are paying attention also to English. I'm not very uh, sure about it, but as far as I know, they are not looking for Russian. It is not a must, let's say. Okay, thank you. And uh, we have left with just last three questions. Uh, question from Charim. Uh, good afternoon, Nazlı Hanım. Firstly, I'm grateful to, grateful to you for sharing such a beautiful and important presentation with us. My question will be about the executive summary that almost all of people tend to include that in CV. So which type of inv information uh, you would recommend including in our executive summary that might attract HR to get in touch with us? Thank you so much. Um, it will be like a couple of sentences in the beginning of the resume, like one, one paragraph. Uh, in, in your case, as a fresh graduate, I recommend you to put your aim. I mean, for example, you are a chemical engineer and you want to develop your career in, I don't know, the production or some uh, process engineering. Why you want those, uh, why you want 
to, to, to be part of the company in those roles and wh why you think you are suitable. It could you, you could refer to your internship or you could refer to your, I don't know, graduation project in just in a couple of sentences. Thank you. And a question from Arsu. Uh, is it ethics to, ethic to ask from HR about internship programs in their companies throughout LinkedIn profile? If I have passion to work there as an as intern, although they don't announce it. My personal preference is yes, because LinkedIn is a professional uh, network. I mean, it is not my uh, private network. I mean, if you ask to me from my Instagram account, yes, I don't prefer it. But from LinkedIn, yes, why not? Because we are using it because I'm there as a representative of Sokar. Uh, so you can ask any questions related to Sokar from my LinkedIn account. Thank you. And last question, the, the questions that I have mentioned uh, from Talia. Uh, one more question about knowing the company. It happened to me four months ago. I have applied to one job in summer. I don't have any of the requirements that were written. Additionally, I haven't known the company name, but after a few months, they contacted me and said, we loved your CV. And unfortunately, I didn't know the company name. Very interesting case. That's why I asked for three times and couldn't understand anything. That's why I query going to interview and rejected. it. Sure, I regret it. I want to ask one thing most probably. You have also this kind of experience. How you behave in this situation as a recruiter? I mean, does it mean candidate has already failed the interview even before going to it? Interesting case, but to say the truth, I mean, I did the same thing in in in, in the beginning of my career. Uh, so my advice firstly will be try to understand the company name and we all have our cell phones ready. OK, maybe you can say that I'm not uh, just get the name of the company and say that I'm not available currently. Can you call me? I mean, 10. 15 minutes later, half an hour later, and do a quick search about the company. Because what I did, it, but I was uh, uh, lucky at that time. My first uh, experience is at ABB. ABB is the Asia um, Brown uh, again in electric uh, uh, energy sector. Uh, and it was one of the companies I applied, to be, but, but as a fresh graduate, you know, I mean, I was applying at that time many companies and the recruiter from ABB called me and I couldn't recognize the name and I don't remember the uh, advertisement, I didn't remember the advertisement and I said no, no I'm not interested, thank you and hang up the phone. Then after a couple of minutes I recalled the company name ABB and it's a global one blah blah and just I recalled back the recruiter, I said I'm sorry I want to come back to the interview and somehow they gave me that chance but uh, that recruiter became my mentor when I joined that and she said that this is just for your luck, I mean I will not accept any candidate saying no in the beginning and then calling later and I want to be part of the interview, it is just, just because of my luck. So don't do the same mistake that I did say, uh, try to understand the company name and make a search and call them later. <laughs> Thank you again. This was all the questions and I hope Talia, your question was answered. And we don't have any questions, I think. Uh, and if anyone has any, and if Nathalham, you have time, someone can unmute themselves and uh, themselves and ask questions. But I think we don't have any. We have uh, so many thank yous coming in. So thank again, you. thank you, Nazlı Hanım. Thank you for your taking time, accepting our invitation and okay. presenting that presentation. We have learned a lot. And I think that I will change some details in my CV regarding <laughs> some details from internships. <laughs> I put a lot of technical details. I will change them. Thanks again, and I believe all our participants have learned great deal from your presentation. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here with you and thank you a lot for your participation. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, dear participants. And today at 5 p.m. GMT plus 4, I'm in Baku time. We will have the next session from uh, Ajul Hanım Şulun See you there. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you.